so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Travel knocking at my door today. season of Pentecost. Happy Father's Day as well. This is a wonderful day here at Living Waters. Some announcements before we get started with worship this morning. A very, a one I've been waiting for. The parking lot is fully fundraised. Yeah! It is ready to go. It is being repaved not tomorrow, but the following Monday. And we'll say this again next week, but I'm, I'm starting to plant it in your brain now. Do not, this is going to be weird, your pastor's about to tell you, do not come to church on Monday, the 26th or the 27th, because the uh, parking lot will be repaved, and you don't want to drive on that, because they won't have to do it again. So, your pastor's telling you not to come to church on the 26th and 27th, and just a good measure, maybe not 28th either, depends on the day they do it on the 26th. Okay, thank you. Uh, and, thank, and thank you for, for making this possible. It's very exciting to be able to raise that, so thank you. Uh, our summer sermon series, is it F5 times fast, begins next Sunday. It'll be four Sundays in a row, uh, focusing on rest. And uh, <clears throat> given what I have been experiencing the last month or so, I've learned a lot about rest, so I have a lot to share with you. And I've read a lot of books, so uh, it's going to be a really good series. I'm really, really excited for it. Um, we'll have more details about some of the things we're doing with it next week, but uh, please join us for that in person or at home online. The outreach team, we're looking for water bottles for the 4th of July parade. We're marching again this year. Uh, we're collecting those. If you look into the... Uh, Amy, could you point at the water bottle fortress? Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, yes, the, we are collecting water bottles, and we're going to relabel them sometime before the parade. We passed out... Oh. I think we passed out 1,500 last year. Does that sound right? It was a lot. A lot. That's a good, that's good. Just use a bit of a, a lot. Um, yeah, so uh, this is our way to, to be a part of the community event and, and uh, pass out water because we are living waters after all. So uh, any donations of water bottles was very much appreciated because we're going to give them all out and then some. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see. But don't, don't wait until next Monday to bring them because you can't. Because it's going to be paved. So get them in this week. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> a letter went out this week. Uh, the, we had our vision summit back in February. The stewardship team has been working overdrive to uh, 
go through all of that wonderful feedback and data. There was so much, and we're very thankful for everyone uh, using their voice and, and giving us this important feedback to help discern our future as a congregation. And, and they've done a wonderful job in distilling some, some future goals and, and uh, in both the short, or not both, in the short, medium, and long term. So if you didn't get a chance to read that, I highly encourage you to do so. It's on our social media. It's also on Realm. And if you can't find it, just talk to me. I'll, I'll send it to you. All right. Uh, a reminder, we're doing the rotating benevolence for the, the, the change for change. Currently, this time period, quarter, it's going to Good Samaritans Ministries here in Crystal Lake. This is the ministry that when we have folks that need help with uh, utilities, rental assistance, folks that come in need, um, and it's, it's a larger need than perhaps we can um, meet. This is where we send them. They have a, a very good vetting process. A lot of the churches in the area uh, support Good Samaritan, and we're one of those churches. So uh, I really like to get a check to them because demand is very high right now. So uh, please, if you have, have the ability to, uh, you can always write a check to uh, the Change for Change Fund as well. Is that fair to say, Kermit? Change for Change? You'll know what that is? Okay, great, great. Put it in the memo, change for change, and yeah. Kermit will know it'll go to the change because he was listening, right? I wasn't. I know. <laughs> I know. All right. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I, I stopped listening to myself half the time, so anyway. All right. Uh, Rachel, you have an announcement? I think it's a good time for me to stop talking. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to invite all of the... Uh, father figures after church um, the kids will be passing out a little gift for you um, it's you guys can probably all figure this out but I'm gonna show you <laughs> it's a little tool it's like a little key it has like a keychain it has a bottle opener it has a screwdriver on the end um, and it has like a little wrench thing in the middle so something that you can put in your pocket and be very handy oh and it has a sharp thing here so you could cut things open oh. so if you want one of those careful up. see the kids after church <laughs> very good thank you a nice omni tool I love it okay excellent Uh, Karen and Chris Schenkerfelder, would you like to come up? Our Northern Illinois Senate, Senate Assembly was this past Friday and Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, because of my health, I was unable to go. So the Schenkenfelders were the heroes, our delegates who carried our congregation's representation, yes, single-handedly. And they're here to tell us what happened. Good morning, everybody. The theme of this year's assembly was be the body, as in the body of Christ. Within the Evangelical Lutheran Church that we're all part of, we experience being the body in our congregation, but also in our Synod of Northern Illinois and as part of the whole churchwide body across the United States. And um, I think most of us, we think about what we do here in this congregation. Um, we do, um, we worship God, we do acts of service, we learn and tell stories of faith, we make decisions about how to use our resources, and we enjoy fellowship with one another. Those are kind of basic things that we do here in our congregation. And when we go to the Synod Assembly, we're basically doing the same things, only we have to do it really fast because it's a day and a half. But um, yeah, we do them um, with other congregations and um, with our bishop, who's um, Stacy Fiddler. So this year, Chris and I were the voting members from Living Waters, and we're going to share an overview of our experience, and then after worship, we're really happy to answer questions or talk about our experience. And Chris is going to start us off on worship. So uh, we worshiped Friday afternoon and at the beginning of our Saturday gathering. Um, it, it's a great experience uh, to be singing and praying with uh, hundreds of others. There were over 300, 300 people uh, at the assembly, um, thanks to the credentials committee. I, they let us know how many people that were there so that we could have a quorum. Um, but what I uh, took away was the uh, very first day of the opening where the um, bishop, Stacy did the land acknowledgement. And she acknowledged the land that um, Augustana College sits on was part of the land that uh, Indians before 
the white settlers came, uh, called their, their land. The, the, and, and it reflects the same Indians that were on, in McHenry County in this area, which is going to be reflected in the land acknowledgement statement I'm working on for us. Uh, the Indians were the Fox and the Sac, Ho-Chunk, Potawatomi, Peoria, and uh, the Kickapoo. Um, our service project, we were invited to bring personal care items, you know, like soap and towels and things, um, to make kits. And um, over 300 kits were donated to congregations in the Synod um, where they'll be distributed to people who have that kind of immediate need for those basic supplies. Okay. Oh, I starting hearing and learning. Um, we listened to, I, I wish I could say just how inspirational the, the talk was by the Reverend Dr. Char, uh, Charlene Rashwee Cox, the program director for Congregational Thriving at St. Olaf College. She she's heads up um, discernment about what's God calling us to do, and that's what she talked about. And, and then um, later we had breakout sessions, and this year's breakout sessions were different from what I've experienced in the past. We were invited to sit with the people in our congregation, and um, Dr. Cox and um, one of her colleagues took turns um, leading a session where we began to think about where is God calling us as a congregation, given our particular circumstances, and where is God calling us as individuals, given our particular circumstances. Um, and uh, these are resources that are being made available. So what you go, you go and you get a taste of something that you can bring back. Um, and um, this was all an extension of themes. If you were um, paying attention to sermons in Lent or you remember them or you came to the Wednesday evenings in Lent, there was a lot of talk about discerning God's call. And um, this is building on that in the hope that we'll just keep building and building that here in our congregation. Um, and then after... Uh, things were finished on Friday and after dinner. We went to a ministry fair, uh, one of the floors in the uh, uh, library building on, on campus. And um, we got to see the different partner organizations and city committees. Uh, uh, they had displays down there to, for us to look at. And uh, one display that caught my eye was from the Rockford Ministries, um, emphasizing their work with LGBT. QTIA and, and um, the community there. And I ended up picking up a lot of buttons for gay pride and um, because he was giving them away. So <laughs> I thought, I'm going to distribute these in the geocache I have back in the woods. I'm going to put them in there. And when people come back here to find that cache and they discover it and they go online to log it, I, I mean, I invite them to take one of these uh, gay pride buttons. They're magnetic, like refrigerated maggots or lapel pins. It's my little part for, for that community. Okay, using resources. Um, we elected people to fill vacancies on committees in the Senate office and the, in the Senate offices, and um, we approved a budget. We also had an opportunity to contribute to an exciting partnership with the Southeastern Iowa Senate. Um, this is a story that I don't have time to tell you, so ask me, but the former Lutheran president in Guatemala had to flee the country and wound up in the Quad Cities. And the two synods went, oh. <laughs> and they are setting, they're restarting a mission to Spanish-speaking people in the Quad Cities with the guy that headed the Lutheran Church in Guatemala. And he and a uh, pastor there are um, beginning to build a two-parish community, one on the Iowa side and one on the Illinois side. Um, and this is a growth area in that part of the country. And uh, he spoke to us. Um, yeah. Um, there's a, the Synod's Innovation Fund we were invited to contribute to, um, and you all are invited to contribute to. Um, that is going to be one of the projects that that is going to help enable. So a part of the, the business that the uh, assembly attended to was, was to pass a, a couple of resolutions. 
Um, and the first resolution affirms an existing adult faith formation program called Diakonia. And it encourages pastors and deacons to build support uh, for the program. So it just affirms the, the, the program. The second one um, asked the churchwide, churchwide capital C, uh, leaders to launch an update of an existing social statement on abortion. It's not a plan of a revision, but a request for a revision process to occur. Um, if, if you would like to see a copy of either one of these resolutions that got passed, um, just talk to me or Karen after worship. Um, and then finally, fellowship. We had opportunities to meet and chat with others at our Friday picnic lunch, at dinner, and between other activities. And we enjoyed walking around Augustana College's campus, which is beautiful. Uh, every year, Living Waters sends two voting members to the Senate Assembly. It is always educational. It can be inspiring, as it was very much for me this year, to see what people are doing and how passionate and dedicated um, and well-equipped they are to serve God. Uh, if someone asks you next year, you might want to say yes. Um, and also, any member can go and observe without voting. So if you want to make the drive out to the Quad Cities next June, you can see what's happening. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Chris and Karen, for, for representing us. And, and this was wonderful to hear all the, the good things that are happening in our Senate. I, I didn't know about the the president of Guatemala, or of the Lutheran Church of Guatemala is here. That's, that's amazing. So, Yeah, because he fled a couple week, months ago, weeks ago. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, one, one. of course, St. Olaf College graduate was inspiring. Or St. Olaf College was inspiring, of course. You know. um, yeah, yeah, okay, anyway. Uh, real quick, final. Uh, Juneteenth is tomorrow. We will have our continued anti-racism conversations. Now is the time. It's the next session. Dinner and discussions, potluck dinner, discussion to follow. Uh, prayer of the day does reflect Juneteenth weekend. Uh, Diana, is feel, feeling well? Can I get a volunteer to be a communion assistant today? I'll say Heidi, because you, you, you spoke a lot. Heidi? Okay, great. Thank you. And finally, finally... We have a guest today. David Novak, could you stand up, please, and just give a wave? I told you you wouldn't have to speak this part. There you go. There he is. David Novak is here with us from Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. He'll be uh, preaching for us today. So thank you, David, for, for being here, making the trip out. Please make sure to give him a Living Waters welcome uh, after worship and, and uh, ask him all of your burning questions about LSSI and welcome him to our congregation. All right. A lot going on. You know, summertime, still a lot happening here at Living Waters. So, uh, I do not see any other announcements, so if, as you were able, please stand as we begin worship together with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us this and every season, whose word never fails and whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have, we have sunk in your blessing. We have hoarded your bounty. We have lacked courage to speak. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Trust the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what Whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am. Who I am. Oh, when 
and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're all good, good Father. Righteous God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fiercely against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like the generations before us, to resist the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form, in any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere, to the glory of your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today's first reading is from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 to 8a. You can find this reading on page 57 in the Bible under your chair. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountains. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine. But you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Our second reading today is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. You can find this reading on page 917 in your Bible. 
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone will actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel of our Lord according to Matthew, the ninth and tenth chapter. You can find this reading on page, starting on page 789. This is Matthew 9, 35 through 10, 8. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the name of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles. Enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, go without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and invite the kids up for the children's message this morning. Morning, gentlemen. How you doing? Oh, that's really good. All right. I wasn't ready for that. Okay. All right. Have you ever uh, played a game of cards before? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Look at these beautiful cards. Oh yeah. Oh no! Can you? Oh, can you help me pick those up? I can't. Wait. I just dropped those. How clumsy of me. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. Green Bay. Right here, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I really appreciate that. Oh, no. Oh, thank you. Lucky number nine, huh? Okay, whoops. Okay, put the mic back on. Oh, just so clumsy, you know? That's, but oh, they're, they're kind of slick, you know? That was, anyway, so like I was saying, we're going to play a game. Of, oh, no, not again. Oh, here, can you help me again? Oh, I can't. 54 card pickup? That sounds like a fun game. All right. Oh, all right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Boy, this isn't, this isn't going very well. You know, this has me think. There are a lot of times things don't go the way they should in the world, right? Uh, a lot of problems, but there's always good news. Just like you know, me dropping all these cards. Should I do it again? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Be, there's always people... They're also there to help, right? Look, at you, you all just jumped right in, even though they were beautiful Packer cards. You still helped me, and that was really nice. You know, I know a lot of you Bear fans, I know. Um, anyway, God, uh, we heard from this gospel this morning that the, the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. Ask God to send people into the harvest. Ask people to help 
with all the needs of the world, whether it's helping picking up the pieces of, of issues or things not going the way they should, uh, or whatever, wherever there's a need, right? The ways that we help in the community as well. So, thanks for your help this morning. Will you pray with me? And I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Please send us and lots of people to help this world. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning. We pray. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, Living Waters is such a beautiful church. I'm so grateful for members of this congregation in its support of Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. Now, a few weeks ago, we celebrated Good Shepherd Sunday all across our state and churches uplifted the ministry of Lutheran Social Service of Illinois, and many, like Living Waters, celebrate throughout May and June. Now, LSSI is your social service ministry, and all of you here today are personally connected to LSSI through this beautiful church and the Northern Illinois Synod. Now, in the next 10 minutes or so, I can't share with you everything about LSSI, but for today, please remember, we are the largest provider of foster care in the entire state. In fact, we just started a brand new program called Families Together in Chicago, which is a complete redesign of the child welfare system in the state. In working with Department of Children and Family Services, they simply said, the Lutherans will take care of it. We have powerful alcohol and drug use programs. We provide loving homes for those with developmental disabilities, amazing mental health services. We also provide affordable senior housing all across the state, including right here in Crystal Lake at Gable Point. We have in-home care for seniors, and we've got a beautiful prisoner and family ministry. Now, this isn't meant to be a short list of all the services we provide, but caring for children and their families assisting those with developmental disabilities, supporting seniors. These are all deeply rooted beliefs that all of us as people of faith share. Now, Henry Nouwen was a Catholic priest and theologian who I really appreciate. And one of his quotes is, one of the most powerful experiences in a life of compassion is the expansion of our hearts into a world embracing space of healing from which no one is excluded. Expansion of our hearts is LSSI's gift initiative to fund our strategic priorities, which you'll hear much more about in the coming year. This special initiative will help LSSI as we play our role in God's plan to serve those in need across Illinois. I thank Living Waters for all of its support of our ministry. It's a beautiful example of sharing the grace of Christ. Now, I imagine there are many things you can still remember from Sunday school, right? You know, for example, we learned that the correct answer to any question asked by our pastor was Jesus, right? Now, some leading respected theologians consider Jesus loves me as one of their greatest learnings. Now, I'm 61 years old, so Sunday school was over 50 years ago for me. Now, for some of you here today, Sunday school is a pretty recent memory. For others, you know, it might be more than my 50-plus years. Well, there's another song that I've always remembered, and this morning's gospel lesson made me think of it. In all of these years, I've thought that this was a song that everyone learned. Now, I grew up in a small Methodist church in Chicago. My mom was my Sunday school teacher. Now, my wife, Cindy, grew up in a rather large Missouri Synod Lutheran church. She's never heard the song before. I sang it to a couple of my colleagues. Never heard the song before. It's called, He Has Called Us To. 
Now, I apologize for my singing voice. It was much, much higher uh, when I first learned this song back in Sunday school, but here it goes. There were 12 disciples. Jesus called to help him. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, his brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, and Bartholomew. He is called the Sue. He is called the Sue. Does this sound familiar to anyone? No. All right. <laughs> well, you're not going to sign me up for your uh, uh, choir, I, I, I'm sure. So I apologize for that. But that's how I learned the names of the 12 disciples. And I remember it to this day. Uh, you know, today's Father's Day, but I think at least my mom would be proud of me. But after all these years, I, I still feel bad for Bartholomew because he's named last, even after Judas. I guess just because his name rhymed for the song. So I thought after reading the gospel lesson today that I would give Bartholomew his due. But as it turns out, there isn't too much that scholars and history agree upon. His name only appears in the four lists of the 12 apostles in the New Testament. Some scholars today identify Bartholomew as Nathaniel, who appears in the Gospel of John, but others do not. The details of Bartholomew's life, including his true first name, are lost and forgotten. However, there are some things that we know about him. It's believed that after Jesus' death, he was known as a missionary in Armenia, Mesopotamia and India. What scholars do agree upon is that he died a martyr and died a particularly cruel death. But as one of Jesus' chosen 12, Bartholomew has to be considered one of our greatest Christian leaders. It's amazing to think what Jesus asked of his disciples and how they went about his ministry. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. Now they had witnessed Jesus do all of this and more, but now the disciples were asked to do the same. So I was trying to get a handle on the impact someone like Bartholomew may have had. He and the other disciples walked from town to town, not like today with cars and trains and other transportation. How many lives may they have touched? Well, it turns out it may have been a lot. Most scholars believe that the population of Galilee at the time of Jesus was two to three million. Many towns had 15,000 or more people. So even though they went by foot, what incredible ministry took place. But how then could these 12 men, who were fishermen, craftsmen, commoners, a tax collector, and even the one who would later betray Jesus, be able to accept this task that Jesus gave to them? Well, naturally, the answer is that none of them were able to carry out the mission that Jesus had given them on their own. But since Jesus had chosen them and the Holy Spirit had given them strength, they were able to participate in Christ's holy ministry. What faith Jesus must have had in his disciples to take on this mission. After all, it seems like there is story after story of the disciples being rather clueless of Jesus' ministry. Still, they could do amazing things through the authority Jesus gave them. It's perhaps a difficult passage for many of us today. We are not accustomed to casting out unclean spirits. Healing diseases are left to physicians and other professionals. So how is Jesus calling us today to further his ministry? What work can we do to share that his kingdom is near? Well, we know that we still have work to do on earth here today to glorify God. And we could see it at LSSI. I believe that through LSSI's ministry, we do see the work of the kingdom every day. At LSSI, our mission statement is responding to the gospel. LSSI brings healing, justice, and wholeness to people and communities. Through our work, God is embracing all of those whom we serve to bring healing. 
Greater works in Jesus' name is clearly evident in the work and ministry of LSSI. As we celebrate our ministry, here is good news that I can share. LSSI answers the call to demonstrate the resurrection of Jesus in the lives of those that we have the privilege to serve and work with. For those we serve who have experienced loss, we work to bring healing and wholeness, and I'm confident they see our faith at work. Our work is measured by three mega outcomes for all those we serve, health and well-being, reaching full potential, and the promotion of dignity. And it takes place right here in Crystal Lake at Gable Point. We care for the whole person, and it's only right that we do this because Jesus always sees us in our wholeness. Let me share with you today just one example of our whole person care approach. So 13-year-old Angie was placed in a well-meaning foster home that had planned to adopt her. These foster parents probably liked the idea of being foster parents more than the day in, day out hard work of hanging in there with a traumatized child. When things did not go out, work out like they expected, Angie was in need of a new start and another new home. And she was once again disappointed and disheartened that this situation did not work out for her. But LSSI's therapeutic foster care program ended up being Angie's new start. LSSI offers therapeutic foster care in Aurora, Chicago, Peoria, and Rockford. Therapeutic foster care places children with histories of severe trauma and emotional behavioral needs in family homes while avoiding institutional settings. So Angie was placed with a patient and understanding therapeutic foster parent, and the team encouraged her to take a chance. Well, that was last year. Recently, Angie graduated from our therapeutic foster care program, and according to those present at the graduation ceremony, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Angie gave a beautiful speech about how angry and resistant she was to the program, and how at the beginning, she didn't trust anyone. She started by saying, I thought, okay, I'll take a chance, and I'm glad I did. She spoke from her heart about how the program helped her turn her life around. But it was behind the scenes that our therapeutic foster care keen team built up this whole person care approach for Angie. We worked with her school. We connected with her health care providers. We provide the training and the support for the foster family. We provided whole person care for Angie. We found an adult sister who was willing with support to become Angie's permanent caregiver. Angie will now step down from therapeutic foster care and eventually leave the foster care system with her sister as her caregiver. This is the good news that Living Waters through LSSI's ministry accomplishes every day throughout Illinois. As always, we are so grateful for your support that Living Waters shares with our ministry. And for those of you who support us with your gifts, thank you. For our Good Shepherd celebration, LSSI has received matching gifts from all three synods, so your support for LSSI will be matched. Thank you so much on behalf of the 42,000 people we served in Illinois last year. So you might remember the song I sang, He Has Called Us To, or perhaps you already are trying to forget. But Jesus has called us to. Perhaps not to cast out demons, but other ministry to help bring about the kingdom and to do justice. Tomorrow, as a country, we will recognize Juneteenth and its powerful reminder to do justice. It's a day that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. And we are grateful for the freedom that we have today. And we pray for those who are still enslaved around the world. Today, we still need to pray for the strength to continue to fight for justice and equality for all people. This is how we can make such a big difference in the world. And we pray for the courage to stand up for what is right when things seem difficult. Now, this authority that Jesus gave to Bartholomew and all the others is what he gives us today, authority to bring healing and justice. 
This is how all of us participate in the kingdom of God. The work is being done through living waters and churches all across the world. The work is being done through the ministry like Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. The work is being done by you as you care for another. And this is good news. We joyfully participate in the work of the kingdom. Just like the disciples, we do not go alone, but we walk side by side with Jesus. We continue to be as one with Jesus today and forever. We follow the one who loves and protects us, who wants us to share the good news of his kingdom and to further his ministry. Today, we are reminded once again that we follow Jesus and further his ministry by taking up the cross. Today, I still find that following Jesus and taking up the cross is fulfilling, it's uplifting, and at times, it's rather unsettling. It's anything but dull. But think of the lift that comes to life when lived in that closeness to God that following his son brings. Nothing compares to that, nor is there anything like knowing that others will be lifted up through our acceptance, love, and the hope that Jesus provides. I'm not sure I did a very good job today of giving Bartholomew his due, but gospel lessons like this morning serves as a beautiful reminder of how Bartholomew, like Bartholomew, we are called to bring about love, mercy, justice, healing, and much more. And we accomplish so much to bring God's kingdom near through Jesus' constant and everlasting love. Amen.
Please stand as you are able. And join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Ascended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news, bringing healing where there is pain, and counter the forces of evil. God, in your mercy. For the earth and all its creatures, we pray. Equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by population or misuse, pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who have longed for successful treatments for mental illness or for freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. This time we lift up prayers aloud or in the silence of our hearts or at home in the comments section. God, in your mercy. For fathers and for father figures, we pray. And so all those who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy. For all the saints, we give thanks. Receive into your eternal care all those who have died. And fill us with a hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answers, so God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. Holy, mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from the evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. All are welcome.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. One, two, three, four. Pastor Outers ready to go, and uh, David is ready to, to shake hands as well. I and mean, the man sang for us in the sermon. Come on, give him some love. Come on, all right. Go in peace, share in the harvest. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fusion. 
practice for us? It's a long song. <laughs> there at the end. <laughs> um, we're gonna do this one next week too. Just for. A... Right, and it won't be. And not be her. Well, we'll have to deal with it. <laughs> we'll have to. Thank you. I appreciate wow, this hedge is sharp. You weren't kidding. You can strip. This is a wire stripper for a wire stripper. Uh, yes. Thank you. Oh, yes, you may. You going to be nice to your dad today or what? Uh, no? Come on, man. I don't you believe gotta keep that. Your Flash, the comic character. Yes. Yeah. yeah, if you don't mind. 